Tanse Jahanache La Helen Uche Doste Oste Prophet River First Nations. I'm 28 years old, and over the past two decades, I've watched Fort St. John and the Peace River region change dramatically. I've watched the areas that we used to explore as kids turning to housing developments to accommodate the new influx of, of families and workers within the territory. I've watched the places that we used to gather as a family um, disappear, either disappear because of pipelines or become gated off and inaccessible. I took my grandmother berry picking the other year and where we went, we were surrounded by pipelines and different developments and she asked me, are these berries even safe to eat? And I couldn't say yes without feeling like I would be lying to her. That's one of the scary things is practicing your traditional activities and not knowing whether or not you're, you're harming your family by giving them contaminated food. Through my own experiences and the experiences of the other indigenous women that I grew up with, I've learned that violence in its many forms accompanies the rapid growth of living in an oil and gas-based region. In 2014, the per capita crime rate of Fort St. John was the highest out of 33 communities in BC, almost two times as high than Vancouver. I've worked hard at trying to address issues that I see within the territory. And some of those issues are violence against Indigenous women and how that connects to violence against land. At first, they were almost separate. And it's been through like my own reflection and witnessing the things that are happening around me within this community and within this area and seeing that the two are connected I used to be able to go uptown and, and know a lot of people, and now it's like, you know, it's a lot of strangers, and I've lived in this town my mm -hmm. whole life. I found when, found when I moved down south for a few years, and then I moved back, the ratio of men to women, like I wasn't used to it anymore, and I came back and I was like overwhelmed, or I'd get anxiety, like going to the grocery store sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, there's so yeah. many men everywhere. I, I see going, even coming and flying back and forth as much as I do, mm -hmm. the amount of people that are flying in to come and work here is crazy. It's astronomical. There's like a bus that sits outside for the flights. That was one of the frustrating pieces, I think, like living down south is I meet a lot of men that live like that north and south split, work up here and then live down there. And they always talk bad, like, oh, that place is such a like, a hell hole or blah 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 and I'm like how dare you yeah. <laughs> you know you, you take your livelihood from this area yeah. and then and then you go back home and then you talk bad about this place when it's what's giving giving of itself to you in order for you to maintain your lifestyle how do you say up river and down river I forget down is Yitse. Yitse Yitchige. 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 About a month ago, I was out at the Peace Point, and on our way back, we came across a pair of shoes and then a sweater and then this young, tall, indigenous woman. And she was distressed. You know, she had one of her pant legs rolled up. She wasn't dressed for the weather. She was in a tank top and it was cold out. And I was so freaked out. I and mean, I was like, I can't, I can't leave her out here. You know, I was so terrified about something happening to her. 
It reminded me of my own story and, you know, the last, I guess, last, like, sexually violent thing that had happened to me. And, you know, I was under the influence and I just know that, you know, there's times where people take advantage of that. And I almost didn't come back from that. By that time, you know, I had already went through a lot of sexually violent encounters, you know. I was like 24 and that was my fourth one. And so, you know, I just, was like, I can do this, I can, I can make it through this because this has happened and I know that I can survive this. You know, I remember going to bed and putting my hands like over my ovaries and things because I was wondering, you know, could I even have children after that? And, and I just, I could not sleep at night and I couldn't stay sober after that. You know, and I've had a long life struggle with, with addiction, and once that came, I lost control. And um, it's really hard to live with stories like that, and especially when you won't give voice to them or you won't tell anybody. And when I seen that lady, I just thought about, you know, the stories that she held that put her in that position or, you know, the things that could happen to her. and. I don't want any of those things to continue to happen in this area or to happen to some of our young girls. You know, I have young cousins that are teenagers and they're gonna be women soon. And I have a lot of family within the communities and you know, I work with a lot of youth and I just see them as these amazing young women and girls with all of this potential to be anything. And a part of that fight is just fighting for a world that sees them that same way, that they don't have to worry about those things happening to them. Because, you know, that's, it's a good chance people don't come back from that. And I'm grateful to be on this side of it, to have reclaimed my voice and my power so that I could do what I can when I can. it like to to be down here you know doing the prayers and stuff like that just on the land right beside where uh, sort of all the construction is going on and all the trucks driving by I think it was really powerful because you know as people drove in and out we we prayed for them we prayed for the workers as well and for the people that are sitting in offices as well as you know the water and the land and the animals and and the other individuals have that have been struggling and suffering from you know the impacts of sightsee and what it could be and um, it, it was good to be able to sit in that manner and pray with brothers and sisters. You know, it, it touched my heart. This place in which was created for us gives us little choice but to stand. It is where silence is not favorable because silence equals erasure, equals invisibility, equals death. My voice our voice, the people's voice, is life.